So this river is high, so we are nymphing. If you don't know nymphing, we're fishing with a bobber and two sinking flies. And when you're doing that, you row a certain way. So for the most part in fly fishing, you have nymphing, dry fly fishing, streamer fishing. What we're looking for today, and a lot of times in nymphing, not always, but we're looking for deep pools because we're about six feet from our bobber to our first fly underneath the water. So what I'm gonna do, and it's similar in dry fly fishing, it varies with water, but what I'm gonna do when broguing casts is I'm staying behind that fly, ideally moving slower and letting those flies first sink down, get to where we wanna be set, and staying behind there and giving him the longest drift possible. If I were to forward row or not row at all, he wouldn't get as long of a drift and would get fewer presentations. So right here, I'm forward rowing just a touch to match pace. I'm gonna crab stroke over just a touch and I'm staying behind that fly. If you also notice with my oar strokes, especially in this quiet water, I'm not doing this, slapping the water. That's gonna spook those fish, sorry, Brogan. But I'm doing nice, quiet oar strokes. It's different for dry flies. You have terrestrials, which you can slap the water you're up against the bank. For your smaller dry flies, like I like trico dries in Western Montana, it's where I'm from. You're in slower moving pools and you are very, very quiet with your oars. A lot of times, ideally, you can anchor on what's called a pod and give your angler multiple presentations. But what you're doing, quiet oar strokes, staying behind that fly and really slow moving. If you're fishing hoppers, beetles, whatever, it doesn't matter as much, you're kind of bank pouting. But with dries, you want to be really quiet and stealthy. It's, there's an element of hunting a little bit with dry fly fishing. And I would say, I think Brogan would agree, that rowing for nymphs uh, and dry flies just on a surface level are very similar. Staying behind the fly, being quiet, matching pace. With streamers, it's a little different. For me, on a big river like the Yellowstone River or the Boulder, I'm covering far more water and I'm angling my boat, sometimes at a 45 degree angle, to keep tension between that fly and the angler. So if I'm not keeping that line tension, my angler will have slack in the line. And your hookup ratio is gonna be far less if you have a bunch of slack. So I'm trying to keep that fly tight. I'm trying to keep that 45 angle proximity. And so we can have a direct connection on each hook set. So they do vary a little bit, actually quite a bit, between nymphs, drives, and streamer fishing. The biggest jump off or difference is between dry fly and nymphs, which are similar. Streamers are quite a bit different. If I'm slowing down, here we're a little quicker, but if I'm slowing down, it, see the slack in Brogan's line, it creates that slack. Luckily has quick enough hands to alleviate that, but I'm gonna keep us almost at a 45, sometimes forward rowing, to maintain tension in that fly. So when you're streamer fishing, you're covering far more water at a rapid pace. And there's a commonly used fly fishing term or saying that slack is evil. In streamer fishing, that is absolutely true. So I'm gonna bail over here to the right. I'm gonna get Brogan set up here. And I'm almost gonna forward row and cover this. Luckily the current's quick enough. I'm gonna move him at about a 45 degree and you can see he's putting motion into his fly and he's got a direct connection between his line and the fly. To where if I was rowing for dry flies or nymphs, I'd be slowing way down. Here, I'm basically letting the current take us and getting that quick, direct connection. There are times, there are times you break rules in fishing, but for the most part, when I'm streamer fishing, maybe I'm not necessarily right, but I'm trying to keep a tight connection to that streamer. And you can notice Brogan is fishing about the first three feet off that bank. That's really standard kind of Western streamer fishing. We're pounding the banks, getting it in there, strip, strip, strip. He doesn't get a connection. He's going right back to that bank and fishing those first three feet. Right now, we have faster current, not really ideal fishing, but I'm just gonna show you. You have that quicker water to your right. Notice how Brogan kind of switches his fly from, from a backwards 45 to a 90, almost to the front of the boat. Here, I'm gonna back row 
because that's going to keep that tension to the fly. Biggest thing is just seeing where the fly is and matching tension with that streamer.